What's up guys, it's Cheyenne and today I want to go over my hunting setup for 2023. So, last year as you guys know, I was running the Prima, this lovely lady behind me. She will be my backup. Um, this year Matthews came out with a new low poundage bow. It wasn't necessarily marketed towards women, um, but nonetheless it works out great for us ladies that fall in that 40 to 50 pound range. Um, there's some crazy cool technology on it that I'm going to talk to you guys about today and just run you through kind of what kind of gear I have on here and why I picked it. So without further ado, this is my new lovely lady. Um, you guys probably saw her at Total Archery Challenge. Any of you guys that saw me there stopped me and got a chance to take a peek at her, but just, just look at her. Are you kidding? This might be possibly one of my favorite bow builds that I've done thus far. Very cute, very matchy-matchy, and she shoots like a dream. So it has everything that I'm looking for in a bow build. Um, nothing against my Prima. She also shoots like a dream, but this thing is just insane with the amount of effort that they put into it and the kind of technology Matthews has come out with. Um, and I'm just super, super pumped that they managed to do a low poundage bow that has all of the stuff that we're looking for from say the phase four or the v3x minus the rubber and the limbs that's the only real difference but other than that they've got all the other technology on here so thank you for that and not leaving us low poundage shooters out like a lot of other brands tend to do so aside from the really cool technology that is on this bow i also just want to go over what equipment i'm running on there sight rest etc um, why I picked it and we will go from there. So without further ado, I'm going to give you guys a little bow tour of my brandy new Matthews image. Okay, so as I was saying before, this bow has all the features of the phase four minus the rubber and the limbs. It does not have uh, the eight limb system. It is still a four limb, but nonetheless, I haven't noticed anything different as far as shooting capabilities go so it really doesn't bother me any um other than that though it does have your bridge lock for your sight as well as your stabilizers i am not running the bridge lock stabilizers every bow i have i run b stinger stabilizers these are my micro hex bars i've got like 50 of them laying over here um, and they will go on all of my bows i just am obsessed with these bars so the bridge lock bars are really cool don't get me wrong those do give you the option to run your bar in and make it a little bit shorter so you don't have to buy multiple bars. If you get one of these new Matthews bows, I do recommend checking out the Bridgelock bars. They are pretty cool. If you don't want to spend almost $300 on a single stabilizer, go take a peek at these micro hex bars. They will do the trick. Moving on from that, I want to continue with the features of this bow. So, as you guys probably know, Matthews has switched over to the switch weight system for their mods. And what they did on this bow, which is honestly the reason that I bought it in the first place, and the reason I think any of you low pounded shooters should go check it out, um, is they converted the switch weight mod system to work on these 50 pound limbs. And so they converted all of their mods over. So the 60, 65, 70, and 75 pound mods are going to convert over to a different poundage on these low pound limbs. So if you put a 60 pound switch weight mod in here, this bow is gonna shoot at 40 pounds without having to back out your limb at all. For me, on this bow in particular, I'm actually shooting 47 to 48 pounds, um, which is the 70 pound mod. So I can pull a lot more weight on this bow than I can usually pull, but let's say I wanted my bow to sit around 43 pounds, which is what I normally set my bows at. On here, I can just throw a 65 pound switch weight mod in that'll make this bow shoot at 43 pounds without me having to touch my limb. If I were to try to do that on the Prima or any other hunting bow from any other brand, even today from any other brand, um, I would have to physically back my limb out of the pocket. And I really hate having to do that. You lose so much flex 
from your limb if you have to back it out of the pocket. The more you back it out, the more it's gonna plane out and the more flat it's gonna get. Because obviously as a low pound shooter, we need all the speed we can get. And I'm just, I'm literally watching it come out because I need to shoot a lower pound than 50 pounds. I'd which mind you, yes, you're gonna shoot still less speed at 40 pounds than you are at 50 pounds, but it's gonna be a little bit more efficient than actually backing out the limb pocket. I am super, super stoked, not only about the switch weight, but the fact that I can pull more weight than I usually can on a bow. Um, 48 is, pretty solid for me. I weigh 105 pounds. Um, and I always tell people, cause they're like, oh, you're only pulling 48 pounds. You should pull more. Meh, 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 meh. Let's talk about ratios for a second here. Okay. If you are a 200 plus pound man pulling 70 pounds, ratio that compared to a 105 pound girl pulling back 48 pounds. Um, as someone that does only pull a small amount of draw weight. Um, I'm super stoked that I am pulling 48 pounds on this. That is pretty solid in my mind. I've been getting some crazy good speed out of this thing when I took it to tack. I think the furthest shot that I made like a clean shot on was 100 and... I don't know, 111 yards maybe? I couldn't even see out of my sight. I had to put my sight housing above the target because uh, it just doesn't go down that far for me. But Regardless, I center punched that thing and the bow got there for me. So, I mean, I really can't complain. She's absolutely killing it. I've always stuck with Matthews because of the way they hold themselves for me. They make it so easy on me. The let off feels great. Um, and that back wall just feels super, super solid. So 10 out of 10, to be honest with you, I'm super stoked about this bow. Moving on from that, obviously I'm really hype about it, but now I'm going to move on to the actual equipment that I'm running on this bow this year. First things first, I've gotten a lot of questions about this in my comment section. Yes, I do have the dialed sight on here as of right now. Um, I do think that there are some things that need to be tweaked as far as the axes adjustments. They are a lot tougher to get where you need them and they're a little bit more of a pain in the butt um, than some of those more established brands. But then again, these guys are a startup and it's one of those things where once you get your axes set, they're set. I mean, I'm not finicking with them 30,000 times after that. I'm setting them one time and then I'm good. Um, so it's a little bit more painstaking as you're setting them, but once they're set, it's really a set it and forget it kind of situation. So overall, I'm liking this site. This guy is a three pin vertical, so I will try to show you guys here. Oh, need a good clean background, kinda. <laughs> okay, so it is a three pin vertical sight. And then what Dialed has done is they've put the level at the top of the sight. Um, so you guys can kind of see it right there. I've kind of liked being able to just glance up and look at my level instead of actually having to um, look down and away from the target. Whereas when I'm using my top pin, the level is so close to my top pin that I'm just kind of like glancing at it a little bit and I can keep it in my peripheral vision a lot better than if it's at the bottom. So I do like that feature. Once you get used to it, it's weird at first, but once you get used to it, um, I think it makes a big difference. So for this year, I want to give the dialed sight a try. I'm super brutal on my equipment when I'm going through the woods. Like especially if it's early and I'm frustrated and there's thick brush and I'm just over it, I will smash my bow off of literally everything. Like, I'm not kidding. It better be tough if it's going out with me, let me just tell you that. I'm really curious. It feels pretty sturdy in construction. Like, I'm really not worried about it. How I said those axes adjustments are kind of a pain in the butt. They are, but also they're a bulkier screw and I just feel like I'm less likely to have anything come loose on here because of how simplistic the design is. However, again, we shall see. I'll take her out into the field, um, take her out hunting a few times and see if it can hold up against me and the trees and the brush and everything I'm gonna be tearing this bow through. We'll see, Dialed, we'll see how you do. I am running it bridge lock through my riser. Um, it's just a lot cleaner and a lot more streamlined than if I were to run it off the side and it also helps so I can run my low pro quiver. I am not running the integrate micro adjust rest. I don't really trust micro adjust like this. I don't know if this is just me, but with how rugged I am on my stuff and how much I'm thrashing it around, honestly, sometimes simpler is better. If you've ever 
worked on a Matthews bow and put a Matthews integrate rest on, or honestly any integrate rest on, usually they're QAD, they're pretty common. That inner set screw is tiny. Like you just have to mess around with one of these rests to know what I'm talking about. It is the tiniest freaking screw I think I've ever seen in my life. It is baby, baby screw. And after putting a few of those on people's bows, like yes, you have that screw and then you have a larger screw that goes over that and encompasses the whole mount. Um, either way, and it has micro adjust. That is a whole lot of tiny parts that can go wrong. When I am pulling this thing through brush and smacking it off of everything and you know, just being really rough on it, the last thing I wanna rely on is a tiny little screw. I just don't wanna risk it. Like honestly, when I say simple, I mean like my site design, pretty simple, pretty rugged. I don't think I'm gonna have an issue with it. My rest design, um, it's not a bad rest. Like I'm still running a QAD. This is the HDX, it's the Matthews edition, so you can see it here. So it's just got the side mount right here instead of it being an integrate mount. And it doesn't have the micro adjust, it's just undoing a set screw and bumping it around. But again, that's one big screw versus a tiny little micro adjust set screw that I'm like not super confident in. It's just more that can go wrong. And to me, like, yes, I put fancier stuff on my target equipment because that's something that I'm not worried about trashing my TRX, you know. Um, my hunting bow, I'm brutal on, and I don't know if that's just me, but this is just my setup and my opinion and what I want to trust in the field and what I trust is a more solid sound screw than a bunch of little micro adjust nonsense. That's just me. Um, I don't want to deal with it if something goes wrong. So I am running the regular side mount QAD drop away. This is a cable driven rest. Generally, I do like to shoot my Hamsky uh, limb-driven rests, but again, I'm brutal on my stuff, and if I have a whole cord coming down to my limb, there's a 99% chance that I'm gonna catch this on something and try to rip it off and I'm gonna break the cord. Like, I know me and I know here how irresponsible I am with my stuff in the field, so this is a lot safer to me, just a little cord, than something running all the way to my limb where I can get it caught and break it. And I'm not saying that the integrate's a bad rest, um, I do like the rest. I think that if I wasn't so hard on my equipment and I paid a little more attention, then maybe I would run that rest. I do like how fine-tuned I can get the micro adjust. It's a good rest. Um, but for someone who is just terrible to their stuff in the field, I don't want to risk it. Moving on to my stabilizers. So with my stabilizers, I am running two 8-inch Bee Stinger Micro Hex with countervail technology. I am running my front bar at an angle, and then I am running my back bar kicked out away from my bow quite a ways. Four ounces on the back, two ounces on the front. That is subject to change. I haven't micro adjusted where I want everything yet. Moving on from that, my peep is Hamsky. I will never ever run a peep that isn't Hamsky, probably ever in my life. Like I'm genuinely saying that right now. Um, I've got a whole stacked wall over here of Hamsky peeps and clarifiers. Thank you, Hamsky. Um, I appreciate it very much. They definitely helped me fuel my archery addiction <laughs> for sure. But since using their product, like I find it very difficult to use anything else. Um, all of my target bows will forever have a Hamsky rest on them. Um, and all of my bows in general will forever have a Hamsky peep in them. That's just what I like and it's what I'm gonna run. But on this bow, I do have an Insight housing, um, the Hamsky Insight peep system. I don't know if you guys have seen that before or heard of that. If you haven't, you really need to go check it out. Honestly, I don't ever wanna run any other peep at this point. So with the Hamsky Insight system, basically what you can do is you can buy the entire kit that's gonna give you all the apertures as well as all the clarifiers, and then you get one housing, and you can get a short draw housing or a regular draw housing. Um, and then all you have to do is use the little tool that comes with it, and then what you do is you can put the clarifier in there and then pick the aperture you want and just screw it into the bottom of your housing. If you don't want to run a clarifier, you don't have to, you can just change the app. But I love it because I can put this peep on a target bow and put whatever clarifier I want and put whatever app I want. And then let's say I want to put that peep on my hunting bow now. All I have to do is unscrew that and I can take the clarifier out and then I can put in whatever other aperture I want and make it whatever size I want. 
Um, so with the Insight system, you do have the option of playing around with different sizes without buying a million different peeps and having to press it and put them in a thousand times. Okay, so aside from my peep, the other thing that I want to mention is I do always run a nose button on all of my bows. Um, a lot of people run the kisser button that goes in the corner of your mouth. I run a nose button, goes to the tip of your nose. Um, and I've been kind of converting a lot of people at the shop onto the nose buttons because to me, they're a lot more repeatable than a kisser. That again is my opinion. If you run a kisser and it works for you and you're still good at anchoring your nose the right way, fantastic. Um, you keep doing you, but for those of you that want to try something new out, I do recommend the nose button, at least giving it a shot. Um, and last but not least, I want to go over my strings. So I've been dabbling around with different strings, um, working with some different string companies and just trying out new things. And I have definitely found the one that I want to stick with for quite some time. So these are Mad Goat custom bow strings. Um, this is Tim Gillingham and Justin's company. Um, I don't know if you know those guys, they're from the Target world. They hunt as well. Um, but they are both very successful target archers on top of that. And they've designed these strings. Um, they are made in a pretty small operation. Justin hand checks over every set before they leave the door. So you know for a fact they're going to be quality. Um, every set I've gotten so far has not only made my bows like really quiet, um, but the timing has been perfect every time I put them on. They've been staying in time. Like I've had some strings that just continue to stretch an ungodly amount and I feel like I have to retime it like every time I shoot. I keep checking these and they won't go out of time. Like no matter how much I shoot this bow, they are so solid. Literally have little goats on them. Like how freaking cute is that? And not to mention it's Tim and Justin and I just love those guys. Anytime I go to a tournament, I hang out with those guys. Probably the most out of anybody. They're just super like down to earth, real people. Um, and for those of you who don't know, Tim is one of the three founders of Hamski. So he's the hammer, that's the ham in Hamski. Um, so if you guys didn't know that, now you do. So he is a founder of that as well. Um, so Tim's a super great guy, super successful. He's taught me like, honestly, most of what I know about target archery. Um, he's been super helpful with that. He's kind of like my target dad. So shout out to Tim um, and Justin as well for always keeping me in line at every tournament. <laughs> um, I appreciate you guys and I am obsessed with these strings. So definitely go check them out. They did give me a code to give to you guys for free shipping and it is free express shipping. So like you can get your strings a lot freaking quicker from those guys um, and get the shipping for free. I think it's one to three days uh, straight to your door. So that's my rant about Mad Goat, 110% worth it. Go check them out. Um, it's just Mad Goat custom bow strings. If you wanna Google them or check them out on Instagram, I will tag that uh, code below for you guys for the free shipping if you would like to get a set of your own. Other than that, I believe that's pretty much my whole setup. I have my limb legs on here right now. I don't hunt with these. Hopefully I covered everything. And again, this stuff is just my opinion. Um, I run it because of how I am as a hunter and what I look for. Um, obviously everybody has their own preference. So please do not think that anything I say is like, you have to run your equipment this way. I'm just kind of giving you guys some stuff to think about um, and showing you how I am setting myself up for this season. So thank you guys. I appreciate you. I love you all. And I'll see you on the next one.